We begin with that big issue, rising concerns about an escalating trade war. Things are getting more heated up. Not moving the right way. More antagonism. Further escalation. A lot of confusion. Ongoing business uncertainty. Volatility and uncertainty. It's a very sobering moment. A very serious risk, but underneath it, there's a bigger story. Bigger and deeper. This long-term um, struggle for, for dominance, really. World power and hegemony. The chessboard and, and many pieces. Now, technology is one of them. The sort of broad trade war morphing to some degree into a, into a war about tech. Technology concern and the IP concern will rumble on for several years to come. This is a five or 10 year story. Five, 10, 15, 20 years. It makes for a very unpredictable environment. Joining me right now around the table, Lale Tapchalu of JOHCM, Eric Liu of Vanda Research, and Stephen Englander of Standard Charter. Stephen, I want to start with you. Uh, do you get the sense that we are heading toward a more protracted conflict uh, that markets are not yet responding to? Um, I I think we are. I think markets are expecting something to happen around G20. If you take a look at the uh, time path of expected volatility, it seems to peak around then. So they expect, you know, my guess is that they expect a deal given the way markets are trading. Uh, that said, I think markets just haven't moved that much. So I think there's still the basic expectation that there's going to be a deal, even if it's not a terribly friendly deal. Lale? I agree. I think there's certainly the hope that we get to a deal uh, by the G20. I think the risk is there's no deal at G20, and then maybe China perhaps thinks about President Trump may not be around after 2020. And Eric, I got to think that things are rising, but right now we're seeing uh, pretty minor declines based on the escalating rhetoric. What will it take for markets to take this seriously? Yeah, so I, look, I, I don't think much of the move that we've seen is actually catalyzed by China at all. I, I think. What you saw was markets were hitting sort of an exhaustion point back into the break-even point, back into the early November levels, early October levels, and that's when everything sort of tanked over. So if you look in the past, the U.S. has typically never responded to the, these sorts of moves from China. And so, so this time is very different, uh, and, and I think um, uh, I don't think very much is priced in yet at all. So I have to wonder, though, at a certain point, how much is the market saying, look, if the trade war does escalate, central banks will save us, right? I mean, the fact that you've got the Fed that's going to considerably cut rates, you've got the PBOC that potentially is going to increase stimulus. It almost doesn't matter or is even beneficial to risk assets uh, if there is an escalating trade war. Lale, what would you say to that? I think it's, it, it's, there's certainly that hope. I think the Fed put is alive and well. You can totally see that from the commentary that's coming through, but I wouldn't really bank on that. I mean, again, to Eric's point earlier, the markets haven't, they haven't sold off. I mean, just because we're down a percent or 2% here and there, that's not a big sell-off. Yeah, but Eric, is that true that the uh, Fed and the PPOC and the ECB puts aren't going to necessarily I, I think the more <clears throat> material put is probably the Trump put, right? And so it, it's really interesting. If you look at Trump's approval rating, uh, the, the, his approval rating ticked up to an all-time high, you know, days before that tweet came out, post the Mueller investigation, right? And so that has started to dip down, and we know that historically when that dips down a lot, the, there tends to be a softening of rhetoric. Stephen? Look, uh, I, I think it differs across countries. I think the Fed has some room to ease, but they, they can probably offset the equivalent of a 1% unemployment rate shock. They can't do a 2% unemployment rate shock. ECB isn't going to rescue anybody. BOJ isn't going to rescue anybody. So, and given the difficulties they have on the fiscal side, they would be in real trouble if we did get an all-out trade war. I think the U.S. would be okay. China would be in trouble as well. Just uh, real quick here, everyone seems to be saying that this is not being priced into markets yet, the idea of a protracted trade war. The question is, what would markets look like if it was being priced in? And I guess that, Lale, do you have a sense of how much U.S. equities would be down? I think you can easily be down 5%. No Eric? problem. That's about right, 5 to 10%. I, th I think... I mean, the most clear places you'd see it is inflation swaps. You haven't seen any re response in inflation swaps, but if you did get a protracted trade war, it's very, very obvious that would be the first impact. Meaning that, you know, that, that, that inflation swaps would go up? They should shoot up by at least 15, 20 basis points. Interesting. Stephen? Yeah, look, you'd see markets pricing in Fed rate cuts quicker and more aggressively, and the, the long end would also be, you know, the long end yields would also be lower. 